Hey guys, how you doing? Big John with J Custom Builds. Happy Sunday, guys. So today we're actually gonna take these guys off and then we're gonna take these forks that don't look too bad. They're just kind of dull and we're gonna change them. What I'm going to do now is I'm taking off all the bolts so that I can uh, take off the, uh, the spotlight first. I'm going to cover the fender so I don't have to worry about the fender getting damaged. So I'm taking these two bolts off the top, off the top of the forks. So the way you can actually do this too, guys, is you loosen up the top bolts and the side bolts. And these actually just lift right off like this, right? But I need to take this off so that I can see what I need to unplug. You have two bolts on the side of the inner fairing. You have two down here. Let me show you guys really quick. So you have those bolts there. There's one on each side. And then you have these two that are down there and they actually connect to the bottom of the lower fairing this chrome piece right here so you can actually take that all off at, as one piece but i don't like doing that i like to separate everything all together and then you take the three top bolts here one two three those two on the sides and those two on the bottoms and the outer fairing comes right off so those down there on the bottom are three sixteenths and they come off pretty easy so I recommend that you take these bottom ones off first because what happens if you take the three top ones off here and then the two on the, on the sides of the speakers or just below the speakers, your fairing's gonna fall on you and you don't wanna do that. Fairing's pretty loose right now other than these guys here. I'll just take this one out. And the minute I take the one on the other side out, the fairing's gonna fall. So I'd rather let the bolt fall than the fairing, of course. So now I'm gonna remove these. And kind of just lift up on the bottom. There we go. Let those go down like that. Pick this up, unplug your lights. There we go. Put this in a nice safe place. Take these lights, unplug them. Unplug these guys. Put these guys in a nice safe place. Right. This is off. Make sure you always know where your bolts are. And from this point, I can actually take off the uh, the forks was what I intend to do, but I gotta be able to get to them from the front as well. I gotta take the front wheel and the front fender off. So that's probably what I'll do now. It'll give me a lot more room. So let's take the calipers off. So those have about 35 pounds of torque on them. So with 35 pounds of torque, you wanna get some leverage. Once you break them, you can get a smaller ratchet. Make, make your life a little bit easier. You wanna hang on to your caliper because the minute you take this last one out, it will fall. Hang that over that like that, but make sure that it's not going to fall. Go to the other side. All right, so I already took the bolt off. The bolt is a this guy right here on this bike is a 15 16th and it should be that way all the way up to 2016. And these are half inch bolts here. So the wheel's in the air right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my foot under it. So I got a dead blow hammer and I have 
have the board underneath the tire right now. And you wanna make sure you get your spacer and look at which direction it's facing. And this one's actually facing out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these half inch on the inside so I can pull the fender up and I don't have to really fight with the tire right now since I got the bike strapped where I want it. So I have a speed wrench right now, loosening up these guys all the way, get the other side. So much easier if you don't have the wheel in the way, but unfortunately, I don't wanna raise the bike up. So I'm just doing what I can right now. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the front one in on that side, and then I'm gonna leave the rear one in on this side. And like I said, they're not too hard. So much easier with the wrench in here, a speed wrench than a ratchet. I'm gonna grab it because the back one's almost off. I can't wait to get a lift, guys. It's gonna be so much so much easier for me when I get a lift. I'm really hoping to get one soon. Okay, there we go. Get this fender out. Get it out of the way. So guys, after you take your ignition off, use a 7 8 wrench to take this off. Then you take these other pieces off like so. And then that piece comes off, your indicator. And then these on this bike are 5 16 So you take those 5 16 bolts off and then this comes off and then you just unplug this. So that's what I'm gonna do next. It's always best to uh, cover your tank too. I mean, you don't want to scratch your tank or anything. I got a bad habit of not doing it. Once you loosen these side ones off for the uh, ignition cover, these are real easy to come out. All right, and then you want to unplug this guy. Come on, baby. These are normally hard to unplug. There we go. <clears throat> now I can actually turn this. So you take these side bolts off of here, right? The ones that this mounts to, your outer fairing, and uh, you just lift that up and you can shift it forward. So right now, the only thing holding the fork, there it is right there, you see that? It's a 5 8 Take that off and the fork slide right out. I already took the four caps off. And to take the cans off, you have these three eighths bolts right here. There's one in the front and one in the very back. They should already be coming out. There it is. There it is. And this one's out. So I went and got the correct uh, bushings yesterday from Oakland Harley. You got to be careful ordering stuff online, man. I went through Amazon for the first order and they sent me these. And then for the second order, I went through eBay and then they sent me the same kit, but a complete kit, which isn't made for these bikes. It's made for something else. I believe Dinah's. So these are the correct ones. I'll show you the difference. The one on the left is much, much thinner. These were not going to go in at all. So let's get ready to put these guys on. All right. There we go. Those bars are tight, man. They're perfect. All right, guys, so I put this new bracket in. I took the old one out. I had to loosen everything on the, on the inner fairing to get it all lined up. But uh, I was pretty impressed because the radio came out perfectly straight, which is exactly what I wanted. I just gotta figure out these wires, get the wires all connected again, but I'm gonna leave that like that for now. I got the riser bushings in. Those were torqued like 36 pounds. And then these guys up here, those guys down there were uh, 16 to 20. I did 20 on them and the bars are 
man, they're perfect. I'm very, very happy with everything, the way it sits, the way everything came out. So I'm gonna leave the cluster off on the bottom because I need to get to those. I need to bore those out with some SOS really quick and uh, take the, the cowbells off so I can put the new chrome ones on there. So I was able to get the new riser bushings in. Those bushings right, right there. I was able to get those new bushings in there and the bars are super, super tight. They're torqued in, everything's torqued perfectly. And I was able to get this new bracket in right here because the one that I had before was a little bent and uh, the radio wasn't sitting straight. So I was able to get the radio sitting in there straight. I'll show you guys that. And I was able to rebore these guys, just not really rebore them, but just clean them up so that I could get the new, uh, the new uh, forks in there, the new chrome forks and get this girl all wrapped up. That's, that's pretty much all I needed to do to Sapphire, you know, to give her away. So, um, okay, so here's the forks and here's what we're gonna do today. And hopefully I could get them done. I'm gonna need somebody to help me afterwards. But, uh, so the uppers, the uppers on these, this is a 2009 and these were a 2000 and I think he said they came out of a 2003 or 2004. Four. They're all the same lowers, but apparently the uppers are different. So the springs in the 2009s are better than the springs and everything inside of the 2006 and below. So we're going to take the uppers off of the old 2009 and put them in the lowers because the lowers are all the same. It's these guys that are different. So we're going to take those and put them in here. So I'm going to take these apart. And when I take those apart, I could just do them one at a time and swap them into here. I will get those done today. And uh, hopefully we can get them put back on the bike and get this girl going. So other than that, let's get into this video. So what I need to do first guys is get these tops taken off. And I'm going to, you know what? I realize I'm going to have to do that on the floor. You want to be super careful with this thing. Cause it's going to, it's going to like literally fly off here in a second. So I want to put this rag over this. It's got, these springs got a lot of tension in them. So getting close guys. All right. Let's get this cap. Go back over here. Get to get this spring out. Still fluid in there. Ooh, that fluid looks nasty too. That's the top of the string. Oh yeah, that fluid is nasty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this clip out of here. You just use that with the screwdriver. Let's see if we got more in there. Here's what we do. All right. All right, let's take this plug out of here. There we go. So until you take this bolt off, you won't be able to get the top slider out because it's actually bolted to the bottom. And there we go. You get a little messy, guys. Here it comes. And there we go. I could take this off. Yeah. This bushing's garbage. That comes out just like that. Set that there. And these are the ones that we're going to reuse. So I got new uh, new bushings for all this stuff too though. Let those come out. Go there. Like I said, guys, this 
this could be or it usually is pretty messy because you're dealing with old ass oils so we'll set that there so we got one taken apart i'm gonna need all these little parts here all right so i believe i drained these guys already but let's get that bottom bolt off and these sure are nice these do have everything already and we're going to use this again there we go i don't think there's anything in this one but we'll find out goes over here let's leave that over there we're leaving those in we don't need to take those out there we go look at that this oil is recently done in here too pull it out all right so so i'm using everything from the 09 so these white bushings don't work, but these old ring O-rings are gonna work perfectly. So we're gonna leave those in there like that. I got all that stuff soaking in gas. So that goes in there just like that. Now, so that goes in there just like this. So this actually goes in here like so. There you go. Got some good little suction to it. Here's the new kit that I have. Let's see what we got in here. So we got the new seals, we got the new springs, we got more seals, we got new stoppers and new gaskets for the bottoms. Perfect. So we're gonna pop this one off. All right. This one's got some pretty good gouges in it, so I won't be saving that one. Let's clean in here real good, make sure there's nothing in there. So let's get this one in there. Come on. There we go. Yeah, that fits good. We'll use this new one over that. Throw a little bit of oil on this. Make sure you put the right side down. This goes first and then the seal. Just like that. All right, let's do this.
All right. That's in there. I just gotta press that in there. Okay guys, so I basically took all four tubes apart. Everything's already down in this one. And so I'm going to put the, the new bushings on here. And you know what, I wanna wipe this. I wanna clean this up a little bit. This is a 2009 uh, inner tube. So I got that in there. Now I'm gonna get a little bit of oil on this guy. Get this guy down in there. Put a little bit of oil around this. And then I'm gonna get the seal. This goes down in there just like that. Your washer, you get the round part facing down. Get a little bit of oil on this. This is the actual, uh, the bushing, the O-ring bushing. And the bottom part faces down. You can see the top part in here it's flat and this is actually open you could see a spring down in there that always goes toward the bottom so this is ready to drop in here the only thing that i do not have i'll lay this girl down and i'm gonna get that get that new bolt in there so i'm gonna get this new o-ring I mean this new bushing, put that in there. You get some blue Loctite, get a good amount in there. You want that to seal up really, really good. Get that down in there. Push it in there really good. And push it back out with the spring. As long as you're holding it down with the spring, you should be able to get a really good grip on it. in there all right so now that's in there like so now i i need to get these bushings pushed down but i i don't i don't have the, the tool so that's all we got guys so let me take you guys off here so you can see so here's the new o-rings these plastic bushings did not work this goes to the other one in there these are all the old ones that I took out. These are the 2009, the dull ones. And these basically came out of the 2005, 2006. You can see how this one's all assembled. And this spring right here was a little bit longer, but weaker than mine because there was no real pressure when I took the top cap off. This guy right here and this guy, yeah, there was actually no pressure at all when I took that off. But when I took the ones off of the Alpha Sapphire, these ones, those things popped off with serious force. So now I know why my boss told me to go ahead and use the new uppers, the 2009 uppers in the chrome bottoms, because those are so much weaker. Anyways, that's where we're at right now. So I got the other one sitting right there just waiting for my brother Harold to get home because he does have the 41 millimeter fork tool. All right, guys, I uh, cleaned up the cowbell. So let's throw some Loctite on these guys, which we really don't need because they're self-locking. And these really don't take very much of uh you don't have to really torque them. Just get them nice and snug. You don't want them to come off. But you don't want them vibrating either. And they do, they do hit a locking point as long as you don't go too much and strip them. Yeah, that one looks really good because they do have a line on the back. They have a line on the back. See how this is just flush right there? It has that line on the back. That line goes toward the back, of course. And you're not always gonna have like them perfect, but these are chrome already. They're original. The guy really took care of the bike. So we're just gonna use these. They came with the forks, so. 
that's what we're gonna use. And it's a three eighths, this, this uh, bolt right here is a three eighths. So I'm just waiting for my brother to get home from work. I'm not sure what time he gets off today. He has the, uh, God, I can't even think of it right now. But, you know, the tool for the fork, the fork tool, 41 millimeter fork tool. I gotta order me one today. My wife just came in and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm kind of on hold until Harold gets home because I don't have a fork tool. I sent the other two back because they were well, the first one was the wrong size and then they sent me the same exact one in replacement when I told them it didn't work. It happens, I'm not blaming anybody, you know, it happens. If it says it's 41 millimeter and it works, then it should work, right? It didn't work, so, but they look pretty good. What do you think, guys? That looked pretty good, huh? Looks good, man. I can't wait. Forks go back on, the tire goes back on the wheel, and we're gonna ride this girl. All right, guys, so I got all the innards and everything put together in my, my brother's home. I didn't even realize he was home. He'd been home for a few hours. I got everything on the inside. Now I'm just gonna get these babies knocked in. You can hear the, the different uh, tone sounds. These are the new ones. Get these in there real quick. Push them down with the screwdriver till you hear the click. And that's not coming out. I usually push the backs in first and then I put them in by hand and then you could just push it down with the screw tip of a screwdriver and you'll hear it snap. There it goes. And there it is. All right, so they're both ready. So here's the board I made. So basically what I do is I stick, see how that's slotted? That fits perfectly in there. It's not gonna go anywhere, right? So I put that in there like that. And then I take one of the tops, see this one right here, and I screw it in. Okay. So that, we put a little bit of oil around that seal, right? I'm gonna try to get this on myself over here. I can't do it guys, it's too hard. Hey guys, how you doing? Big John with J Custom Builds. So my brother just helped me put the uh, forks back together and I got 11 ounces of fluid in them, which the book called for. And uh, now we're, uh, I'm gonna get ready to put that back together. So um, let's get started. All right, so what I did, if you guys can see this, is this top right here, the fork two plug, takes anywhere from 22 to 58 pounds, but I don't have that socket that goes over it. So I just did it with the wrench and I'm sure I got at least 22 pounds on that. So now I'm gonna tuck this baby all the way up. And I'll hold it up and tighten it so I can get it all the way up there. Now I'm gonna get that top fork cap on there. It's actually gonna look pretty nice. All right, so now I got that top plug. So these top ones take anywhere from 50 to uh, 60 pounds. And uh, that's definitely around 50 right there, so. All right, so the plug and the fork cap are both done. Now I'm gonna get this torque right here to, it says calls for 30 to 35 pounds. I guess I will do 35 pounds on that. Don't want those forks coming out. All right, that's 35 pounds. So that one's done. All right, so we're gonna stick this in here. About like so. And then we're gonna tighten that pinch bolt. It was based on the pinch. However, it is to keep it still. Yep. Yeah. So we'll do this. There it is. Now we take the pinch bolt, loosen the pinch bolt, take this back out. Okay, there we go. All right. I'm gonna say I'm gonna do the gold wing.
Let's see if this would have actually locked. There we go. All right, so now we to torque this one to 35 pounds. Thirty-five pounds. Okay, guys, these are done. All right, guys, so I got the forks on there. So I'm going to uh, start checking all these wires up really quick and make sure that everything's plugged in and then uh, get the bike finished. So basically, I got everything connected. Now I'm going to just set the uh, the outer fairing back on here, plug in the light, so I can make sure everything works before I actually seal all this up. I left this loose so in case I got to take this off so I could get the outer fairing on, so. So I'm just gonna set this up here like that. Not gonna hurt anything. I just wanted to make sure that the actual lights work. Everything's hooked up right. Make sure I got high beam, low beam. Make sure the, uh, worked. Yep, everything's working. Now I'm gonna make sure that the flashers work. Oh, you know what? I wanna check the bats too while I'm back here. All right. Everything's looking good. So let's get, let's get this girl back in here. Like so. All right, there we go. So as I explained before, there's one, two, three screws on the top. Then there's two on the inside of the fairing. And then there's two down here on the bottom of the chrome cover. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get these started up here to make it a little bit easier to getting everything lined up. So get this beautiful windshield, slide it in there. There we go. It's amazing how when you got everything uh, true, everything just lines up perfectly. That's one thing I love about this bike. Okay, so I'm going to leave those loose like that, and then I have the two that go on the sides of the fairings. I'm probably going to attach those really quick, but I'm not going to tighten them. And the reason why I'm not going to tighten them is because I want to make sure that I get the two bottom ones on the bottom chrome panel. All right, that went in very easy. All right, so those are in. Get this one tightened up. That's tight. Let's get this tightened up. All right, guys, the fairing is on. You want to feel all the way around to make sure you're good. Yep. And we're absolutely good, guys. So the wheel is going to go just like so. And then the fender. Course is gonna go in just like so. So, what do you guys think? Do these chrome forks look a little bit better? So now that these are in there, I'll get a I'll get a bigger uh, wrench or a nice size uh, ratchet and just give them a nice little torque. Yeah, much better. Fender's not coming off. That fender's on there. I wish I could have. Uh, I wish I could have bought new wheels for all the bikes that I've been working on. But I just uh, my hands are dirty, buddy. You don't want to bite them. You don't want to bite my hands, buddy. You don't want to bite my hands. But I just didn't. You know, I didn't have the funds to do that. You know, and you just gotta make the best of what you have. You know. Anyways, fender's on. I just got to get that front wheel back on. So it's not quite quite finished yet, guys, but uh, it's almost back together. What do you guys think? The wheel's not on there, of course. It's pretty
pretty dirty, but what do you think? Those chromes do look, they're dirty. Got my prints all over them, but I think the chrome forks look much better than the dull ones that were on there, so. Almost done, guys, we'll wrap it up. 